All right. Take it, Micah. <laughs> I have not turned on Do Not Disturb for my Mac. So that's how we're going to start the show. Not really. Hello, everyone who's watching live. All right. <clears throat> It is Friday, December 21st, 2018, the first day of winter, my blessed, lovely, wonderful season. I am Micah Sargent, and right now we are going to talk about a year in all sorts of tech stories, because this is the iMore Show Ho Ho. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, jo joining us this week, first off, you heard that uh, very gracious laugh that I was given. It is, <laughs> it is the one and the only Lori G. Gill. I don't know what the G means. Great, Lori. Great Gill. Yeah, we'll Gangsta. go with that. Gangsta, Lori. Gangsta. <laughs> Lori. Ball. Gangsta Gill. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing, Lori? Excellent. I'm very festive. Last night we watched uh, Scrooge with Bill Murray, and that, like, for me, rings in the official holiday season weekend, let's say. Uh, leading up to that moment, it's kind of like it's just crazy and chaotic, and you're trying to get everything scheduled and get your house clean for the party and trying to get all the presents wrapped. Once you hit Scrooge, it's like, that's it. Christmas is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is on its way. Yep. Uh, we are also joined by the uh, the Canadian who's always in the dark. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. What's what's going on, Renee? Why is the why is the sun not hanging out with you? This I don't know what sadistic jerk decided that <laughs> winter started on the twenty first of December because we've been living in it for months already. And I was just saying before the show that it was so overcast that I didn't actually know it was noon. It feels like it's like 6 a.m. or something here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and I'm, I'm the same as Lori, except for me, it's Elf. I, I start the, the Christmas season with Elf because otherwise I feel like I'm sitting on a throne of lies and stinking of meat, meat and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We're, we're, we're all... Really good one. We're all a little bit uh, sitting on a throne of lies, aren't we? Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it is time uh, to kick the show into gear. Oh, and, you know, um, I thought that going into the 2019 year uh, that I wouldn't be having so many payments for my lawyers. Um, <laughs> but it appears that the the disagreements between Georgia Dow and myself have re-sparked and therefore Georgia is not joining us again for this episode. Uh, but, you know, I do wish her and her family uh, happy holidays and I hope that we could come to an agreement to the new year. <laughs> oh, me too. So I hate I'm, when the parents are fighting. I think that our New Year's resolution on the I More show is to make sure that Georgia and Micah are on the same show more than half the time <laughs> yes yes we've got to make that happen uh but let's go ahead and get get going um we decided that we would talk about sort of uh, a look back at the year uh this week before you know next week we'll do a look into the new year so uh yeah let's go around the table let's talk about some of our favorite stories some of the favorite things that have happened this year and uh some of the highlights you know in in general Lori, let's go ahead and start with you. What what's uh, what's a highlight you want to share with us? Okay, I do have a bunch, but my first highlight, and since I get to go first, I get to steal anyone else's. I'm sorry. Um, Serenity Caldwell in April of 2018 wrote her 2018 iPad review, drawn, edited, and produced with the 9.7 inch iPad, and it's beautiful, oh, and I love it, and it's inspirational and spectacular, and really just makes me excited about creativity and it, it's so it's there is a written part of it but really you have to watch the video because it's amazing she just does this whole thing she uses she lists the app um she uses procreate and linea sketch as well as keynote astropad astropad glider classic swift playgrounds itunes university boulevard ar vh cam prompt safari ibooks in the app store um, some of them, she's just showing you what's what's there, but she used a lot of these things as well as screen recorder to capture herself sketching her review, which she did this um, 
Uh, Renee, you might be able to help me. Was it 2016 that she did this for the other um, iPad review? It was the it, iPad Pro. The Apple Pencil review. The Apple Pencil it. review. And yeah. and that one was also spectacular. She, she does it again with the 9.7 inch iPad for, for 2018, which gets Apple Pencil support. So it makes sense that she would, she would kind of make that comparison there. And uh, I don't know. I loved it. What'd you guys think? Uh, I remember seeing sort of an early, you know, uh, an early look as she was getting it all put together and I was so excited about it. Um, and in its fine, in its final form, it was, I mean, it was incredible. It was inspiring. Like you've said, uh, you know, people get these devices and they may have, you know, what, what ideally they hope to be able to do with them. And to see that, you know, kind of come to fruition in a, like as a review as well was just, it was all around just a really good idea. Um, you know, when, when Serenity had announced that she was going to be leaving, one of the things that really, you know, in my sort of look back on my time with her, uh, the thing that I really appreciated about her was how she brought um, creativity uh, in, in a very real and very like visceral sense to the projects that she worked on. Um, that was inspiring, you know, as a, as we, we both had like been in theater and, and artsy type stuff. And so to see those things get to shine through in something that isn't necessarily on its face as theatrical and artsy was uh, yeah, it was really inspiring. So it worked on two levels. I think that it, you know, was an inspiration for anyone who was looking for ways to create with the iPad. But it was also an inspiration for tech journalists who might feel a little bit like, oh, man, I don't get to necessarily let that creative outlet uh, happen as much anymore. <laughs> this is a way that it can be done. And so, yeah, it was just it was really awesome all around. And uh, I I'm glad that like, you know, we got to be a part of that and see that be created and then and then get out there to the world. Yeah, one of the things I love most about Serenity is that you're largely dealing with a field of people who on some occasions feel like they just don't care anymore. Like they're dialed out, they're grumpy, they've given up, they're reviewing a phone and all you see is there's no SIM card in it. And or they're talking about missing features that are like the, literally the first feature you see when you turn on the phone. And they're just so cynical. And she was just such a breath air. You know that she used every iota of that machine producing that video and shows you ways that you can use it beyond just what a review could. And that to me is like quintessential Caldwell. Ooh, quintessential yeah. Caldwell. <laughs> Holy moly. That's like a, that's a Sunday comic right there. <laughs> <laughs> that is now. Oh, third career for Serenity. I hope she has a ton. <laughs> copyright, copyright, copyright. Yeah, yeah. You got to get that written down. <laughs> Chihuahua.coffee right on it. What about you, Michael? What was your um Oh no, no, Renee's of... next. Renee's next. Oh Renee. Oh, all right. <laughs> I gotta go last. <laughs> all right. So um one of the big ones for me, like I love feisty, fiery Tim Cook. Like I remember years ago when an in an investor call at the shareholders meeting, one of these hedge fund guys got up and said, I don't want you wasting our money on accessibility in the environment. Uh it's got no <laughs> ROI. And Tim Cook just you know, and he's a sister, Ooh, such yes. a southern gentleman, and he just says, I don't give a damn about the ROI. And I'm like, oh, you go, Tim Cook. And this year, <laughs> we saw something very similar very early on in the year. But it was so early on in the story that I don't think we appreciated it in its full context. But looking back at it now, after the year that we've had, I think we can really appreciate it. And that's when right after the March event, the same event that Apple announced the iPad, they're starting to get a review on. They did an interview with Tim Cook, and it was on the heels of the Cambridge Analytica scandal, where Facebook was... Mm first time really being held to account for some of their more egregious activities. And they asked Tim Cook, what would you do if you were in this situation? He said, I would never be in this situation. And man, Mark Zuckerberg got mad and went on a little mini, mini temper tantrum. And he's like, uh, we're not doing this. We're not doing that. And now you look over back over the year where they've had, I think people have lost count. They've, ever, they've had over 20 scandals and they just keep getting worse and worse. And you try to like, ah, oh, he was step into Tim Cook, who is such a, you know, is such a Southern gentleman, but feels so fiercely about privacy and about, you know, making value by giving value to customers, not making value by pulling value from customers. And it just, it resonates so well now. And whether you like Facebook or you like Google or you like whoever, it's just, it's invaluable to me that Apple has become, like they've really, they, you know, going back to Steve Jobs, he was always, 
if you if you're worried about privacy, you ask the customer, you ask them again, you ask them again, you keep asking them until they are finally so frustrated they ask you to stop asking them. Mm. But that's privacy. And Tim Cook has really solidified it, codified it, even ahead of like the EU. He said, you know, don't collect data from your customers. If you have to collect data from customers, collect the minimum data. Encrypt everything you collect. Don't keep it for any longer than you have to keep it. Delete it immediately when you don't need it anymore. And these are the sorts of things that you wish, you know, like that the EU is busy imposing on people and Apple's doing it ahead of the curve. And whether you liked it or not, I think it's important that we have the option. And I'm glad that a company the size, scale, and reach of Apple is making it a like first level, top down priority and literally putting their massive amounts of money where their mouths are. Yeah, it's also the right now we're really starting to understand the general public is really starting to understand privacy and the importance of it on, on the internet and with our technology. But Apple's been pushing that from day one for, for years, for a very long time. And um, it it's, it's interesting because a, a lot of companies are kind of being sort of put put up on this on this stage of like what are you doing to protect people's privacy but apple isn't really getting any of that kind of attention of what are you doing because they've been doing it all along so mm. it's it's almost unfortunate they're they're not getting more attention for the fact that they've been trying to protect our privacy from the beginning but it's also at the same time kind of like uh, it's 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 like a support or like acknowledgement to everyone who understands what Apple is doing is like, yeah, they're, they're not getting attention because they're not doing anything wrong or, or they're, they're, they've already been trying to do this right all along. So it's, it's neat and, and almost a bummer at the same time. Cause you do want, of course, like it, it's, you get more attention if you're talking about the scandals of Google or Facebook or something like that. But um, the real, the real story is in the fact that Apple's been doing everything they can to protect our privacy from from the beginning. So, yeah, uh, I I mean we've seen yeah I, I think that that's the point there is that we've seen year after year Apple uh, really push for user privacy and it, it's it, the FBI and that whole thing you know was fa or Facebook it was Apple versus the FBI for so long and watching that sort of. Uh, <laughs> go how it went and watching the company sort of really take a stand and say this is this is what we're going to be doing this is us this is what we you know what we care about um was inspiring and it made me feel good about making the decisions that i made as a you know apple a continual apple customer so i am glad you know that the company not only like does these things, but does these things in a very open and and almost shouty kind of way. You know, every page has a privacy section. Every new product, they talk about the privacy features of it. Everything is privacy, privacy, privacy. When Tim Cook goes anywhere, like I'm pretty sure that when he sneezes, instead of making a sneeze sound, he sneezes the word privacy. And I <laughs> love that. I think that's fantastic because that is not only saying like, hey, we care about this thing, but hey, we care about this thing and we want you to know about it. That's going to make you pay more attention to it as well. And on top of that, we're the earningest company in, you know, in all of land or however, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of qualifiers for that. But the point is they make a crap load of money. They make a reindeer ton of money. And because of that, uh, other companies can go, you know, maybe there's something to this whole user privacy and protection thing. And I think that's what's that's what's particularly important. Yeah, Any other thoughts, your turn, Mr. Sergeant? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I I'm going to talk about something that, uh, as opposed to you know a story that 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 we put up, uh, it's more a look back at a theme um, from <laughs> Apple uh, health has been, has, it's continued to be a big thing for Apple, but with the launch of the Series 4 Apple Watch. Ooh, nice watch, man. <laughs> oh, thank you, yes. Hmm, that is a uh, uh, Pat and Quill. Um, and it's it is really my favorite pretty. watch band. And it's okay. So I know we're not, this is off topic, but like it used to be a different color when I first got it. Now it's got that nice Indiana Jones patina going. Ugh. I, anyway, oh, yeah. very good watch That's band. Good. <laughs> so uh, now that that advertisement is over, no, I'm kidding. Um, I, 
I faced a whole lot of um, a lot of health scares in in this in the past year and a little bit in tw- at the end of 2017. And I've talked about it on different podcasts, some weird stuff going that went on with my heart and um, Apple's series three Apple watch at the time was very helpful for me in determining the difference between, Hey, is this like an anxiety attack that's going on right now? Or is there actually something going wrong with my heart um, with the series four Apple watch now and ECG uh, and the ECG app, it's a whole nother next level story. Uh, since the beginning of the Apple watch, there have been these feel good stories about people being people's lives kind of being saved by their Apple watch. And, you know, they've had the situations where they were in a bad place and the only thing they had available was their Apple watch. And they were able to use that to communicate and get in touch with people. Uh, and like the day that the series for Apple watches, ECG feature shipped, there were people, there was a doctor saying you should probably buy stock at Apple because yes. that, the company just kind of saved your life. Um, there are loads of other people that are getting those benefits and seeing, Oh, uh, this is, this is, you know, my, the rhythms are weird in my heart, but I think more importantly than any of that is that this feature and, and this, this focus on health, it, it allows people to, to better understand their health, better take control of their health and to better think about their health. You know, we walk around in these meat sacks and we don't know <laughs> a whole lot about them. Like on the whole people, you know, I, it's, it's wild that I am as of, uh, two days ago, uh, I've been on this planet for 26 years and I don't know, like, what muscles in my hand and, and arm, like allow me to drink a bottle of water. And, you know, that's not information that I necessarily need to know, but it is wild. Like there are people who, who at the end of their life, they die not knowing this whole, this meat sack they've been piloting their whole life. And that's, that's, it's kind of bizarre and scary to me. But I think that when these companies that are, you know, mainstream companies putting out uh, technology and putting out technology that helps us better uh, understand and take control of our health, it stops making it such a foreign language for us. It stops making our bodies so, um, you know, inexplicable and hard to understand. And it puts that, that need to pay attention to one's health, I think, uh, more front of mind. And so if it's as simple as you stand when the stand thing buzzes you, or if it's as deep as your life is literally saved because you have uh, some sort of arrhythmia, that's incredible. And it's all coming from this device that is, you know, uh, uh, at first it sort of was like, oh, this is a fun toy that I get to have. And it takes technology and does something that I want to see from all sorts of technology. Technology is fun and we can, you know, have fun with it. But when it can actually change and save lives and give me better understanding of my of my meat sack, that's incredible. And so the the year of Apple Health, and uh, I, I'm going to talk about it again next week going into the new year, uh, I think is has been a pretty powerful thing. I think that you're it's everything that you're saying makes so much sense. And this idea that we're kind of we can kind of take control a little bit more than maybe we ever have before when technology can help us better understand our own bodies and our and our health. Um, we've always just sort of just said, well, the doctor knows and I, whatever the doctor tells me is what I'm supposed to do. And, and we kind of treat our doctors like they're, they're gods or something. Yes. And then, and then they don't, they, they know a lot more than we do, but they're a century they away don't from know the day. Is it what? They're a century out of leeching us. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they don't know our own bodies, our day to day of, of our day to day lives the way we do. So I might go into the doctor and say, I've got this pain in my side. And I don't I, you know, maybe it started a month ago, maybe it started a week ago, I don't remember. And then they'll go, Oh, well, you know, you just have indigestion, move on. And then it turns out to be something really serious. But it, when we can kind of track our day to day health lives, we can take that information to our doctor and say, No, 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 there's something wrong you know, with my heart, let's say, it, you know, it wasn't just because I overexerted myself six times. I wasn't doing anything. I was sitting there and my doctor doesn't have to go, well, 
Yeah, yeah, it's probably nothing. I could say, no, no, no. Can you please look at this data, this actual mm -hmm. factual data, and then tell me whether or not you think that this is nothing. I need, I need better, you know, a better, you know, diagnosis or or com confirmation that there really is nothing wrong. And and Apple Watch isn't, you know, a miracle or anything like that. But it's certainly a start to a future that I think. Um, could be pretty helpful for all of us as individuals to not just sort of trust our doctors. And I'm not saying don't trust your doctor. I'm just saying that <laughs> our own bodies, like we know, we know what feels right and what doesn't feel right about ourselves. And we yes. can't always express that properly to a doctor and our, and our personalities alone could like deter a doctor from really helping a diagnosis. <laughs> Cause I know when I have pains or something, I might go to a doctor and say, it's not that bad, but it really is that bad. But my personality makes me want to just yes. like kind of downplay something. And uh, so like if you have like actual data of things, you you can you can downplay it all you want and your doctor will look at your information and be able to say, well, no, actually, it is a big deal. And in the reverse, you might be um, worried about something, you know, let's say heart health and and you go to your doctor and you say, I'm having a heart attack seven times a day and your doctor can look at your data and say you're doing okay yes your your heart is a little bit you know racy but actually you're not having a heart attack so let's you know it can work in both ways so that it can help you um just let your doctor know more and that can help them be a better doctor to you and and help kind of get to the right treatment faster so yeah you're right this this I sort of that. technology health technology for the consumer, I really do think it can benefit us. And I, I think there's also this fear that if we're, you know, using Apple Watch to read our, read our heart rates, that we're going to like have a heart attack and think nothing's wrong because our Apple Watch didn't tell us we're having a heart <laughs> attack. And I don't, I think that there's less chances that that's going to happen than there will be chances that uh, our Apple Watch will help us diagnose something more serious, and I think I, that's important. I agree, and I like I don't I don't want to harp on the point too much, but what you said there at the end, I think is, uh, or rather, right close to the end, is so incredibly important because, um, you know, I feel privileged that I've been blessed with a doctor that genuinely listens to me and hears me and helps me through things, but. Time and time again, you know, I'm always I <laughs> I literally love my doctor and like she and I have a really good relationship where we like hug after we're done with the meet. Like she's great. She's fantastic. I quite literally love the love the gal. But uh, I've talked to my friends and I'm like going on about my doctor and how much I think she's awesome. And like, oh, sometimes she uses curse words and it makes me laugh and all those kinds of things. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like you have this you have a what, what kind of doc? Like this is such a wild thing for me and i've heard you know from friends and and acquaintances about their experiences with doctors and how awful they are and how much they aren't listened to and trusted and believed and there are all sorts of things um uh racism fat phobia uh other other forms of discrimination that go into uh, folks not getting the medical care, medical care that they need, and you know there have been studies now that show the number of times women of color have died or nearly died because the doctors didn't listen to them when they said I'm in pain, and there are all these stories of people not getting the care that they need or not being believed. And so yes, I I, I didn't touch on that, but the empowerment of saying that's okay, a great word to use. Yeah, you're not listening to me. Well, let me show you this. And this is hard, you know, cold, hard data that you can't ignore. And, you know, I don't want to be, I hate to be cynical, but when, uh, when it comes down to it, that is the kind of thing where a, you know, a not great doctor, a doctor that's not listening to you, when you show them data, if you then are hurt or you, you know, you suffer something because uh, they didn't listen to you you've got receipts, you've got something that shows, hey, I showed them stuff and they still didn't listen to me. So it's more likely that they're going to listen. So even if they're not, you know, uh, an awesome doctor or, you know, they were just having a rough day or whatever, but they genuinely are kind of like not great, then when it comes down to it, in order to protect themselves, they're going to be more likely to listen to that data. So empowerment 
and uh, an understanding of our bodies, I think has been a really awesome thing um, for, for the Apple Watch and also for the, the health app in general. I connected my health records to the health app and it is so cool. It's so well designed. <laughs> all of my results are in there. I'm kind of a nerd about that. I can see it all. It's great. Uh, so yeah. All right, Lori, what is your next highlight? Actually, my next highlight is going to be um, to talk about Thrifter, which Micah, I think oh. you can start us out. Aha, uh -huh. that was that was smooth. That was very smooth. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yes, so Thrifter is a fantastic way to save money on gadgets, home goods, a whole bunch of other stuff. It is shopping based on value and not ho-ho hype. Uh, the, there are a lot of deals out there. Thank you. Thank you. There are a lot of deals out there that aren't real deals. They're not the real deal. Those deals are just kind of like, oh, well, it cost us five cents to make. So we're going to charge you 10 cents, but we're going to say the price was originally $7. And so there's this, no, these are real deals. They're researched. They're found by real people and they're put together on thrifter.com. And if you go to thrifter.com, and sign up, then you're going to get those thoughtfully selected deals daily. Uh, so Lori is the the official, I was going to say unofficial, but no, totally official <laughs> uh, thrifter deals hound. And so Lori has been looking through the site to find an awesome deal that she wants to share with us. Oh my God. Okay. Lori, if you don't mention this, uh, I, the, I, I just saw that the Phillips hue motion is on the list. Uh, folks, I'm going to include a link in the show notes to, I'm going to ask Jim to include a link in the show notes to my review of the Phillips hue motion sensor. Every person who has a hue setup needs the motion sensor. I'm not kidding. It is the best thing in the world. Okay. Lori, tell us what you found. <laughs> so in addition to Micah's review of the Phillips hue motion sensor, it is normally $40, which is a oh, reasonable yeah. price, honestly. But it is twenty-seven dollars and nineteen cents right now. What? Which yeah, is you like don't get two or I have three two of them, them, and I'm about to buy another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you have got to go get this deal. They're in like every room. They're in my bathrooms. They're in my laundry room. They're in my yes, storage room. Renee. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay. Definitely get the Hue Motion Sensor as a, <laughs> a, a at a thrifter deal. But Renee, how big is your how big is your place that you need it's that? It's not. But if there's a sensors. door, no. But like if there's a door, I want a motion sensor in it. So like if you go into a bathroom, if you go into the kitchen, if you go into the into the laundry room, like why you're carrying you're stuff? You don't have time my to. Language, folks. And I don't even want to talk at that point. I just want the light to go on. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you can have all of that for only $27 if you get it <laughs> hot um, damn. from through Thrifter on Amazon today. I'm doing a Captain Holt hot damn right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, hold on. We're going to go buy our, our motion sensors yeah. right now. Because <laughs> uh, if they run out us. before I get to get one, I'm not going to be happy about it. Um, <laughs> so there you go. That's the Philips Hue motion sensor. I think we talked enough about that deal that we can we can end it on that one. Um, <laughs> I do want to tell you that you can, again, head to thrifter.com to get those deals in your inbox. We recently had Jared DePain on the show, and he talked about how the newsletter is sort of the creme of the crop. It is the creme de la creme. Uh, those are the best of the best deals that are sent to your, your email inbox. And then if you want to get kind of the whole kit and caboodle, other than just going to the site, you can follow at Thrifter Daily on Twitter. If you're in Canada, you can follow at Thrifter CA. And if you're in the UK, you can follow at Thrifter UK to get those awesome deals at any time. So thanks again to Thrifter for sponsoring this week's episode of the iMore Show. And now, Lori, what's your next highlight? <sighs> so, Renee, actually, this is not a very old article. It's It was just, what's today? So it was a, like five days ago, seven days ago. Oh. Uh, Renee did a little bit of a history of breakdown of current and possible future of the iPhone SE. And everybody knows wow. how much I love. I love my four inch iPhone. You do. And it, it doesn't mean 
what's going on right now with the iPhone SE, it doesn't mean that it's gone forever, but it, it has been sunsetted. You can no longer buy a new iPhone SE from Apple. You can only buy one from a reseller or something like that. So the implication being that we're never gonna see a four inch iPhone again. And Renee did a great article, a great vector, and also wrote wrote out the, the words if you wanna read it instead of watch it, um, about the history of the iPhone uh, SE um, where where it stands now and the possible future of it, you know, whether the future is nothing or whether the future is a potential um, full screen, um, four inch form factor, but edge to edge screen uh, display, which, you know, it's not unheard of, it's a possibility. And uh, I, I don't wanna give up hope on that small phone. The, the iPhone 10 size, that is the iPhone 10 and iPhone 10s, which are exactly the same size, um, it's great, it's fine. I have no problem with it. Um, that tiny little four inch phone size though, it's still the perfect size to fit in my back pocket. It's still the perfect size to hold in my hand. Even though the 10S and, and previously the 10 fit very comfortably in my hand, it's still even better <laughs> when it's just that SE size. So um, I, I, I would love for the day to come when we're, we are no longer going big, but maybe we're going big and going small, that maybe there can be two trends. The one trend would be for the people who don't own a computer and use a large phone as their computer or something like that. And then the other trend, which is people who are rejecting the large form factor and moving back to the small phone. So, I mean, if you think about it, when, when, cellular phones when mobile phones were first <laughs> on the market they were huge and the whole point was to get them small make the smallest oh, yeah. cellular phone that you could and and then we went to smartphones which were also very small um but then they just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing so i'm thinking that there's potentially just like there is a trend in clothing that there'll be a trend to go back to the smaller phone and that iPhone SE will get its 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 day in the sun one more time. <laughs> oh, we love the iPhone SE. It's uh the, I, I, I agree my... that like that small oh, <laughs> that small form it. factor is nice and that like candy bar style I've always I've always enjoyed. Um, I remember my friend you you talked about how it's sort of like climbed down in size and then now it's climbing back up. Uh, I remember in I guess sort of in middle school a friend of mine having and she's already like she's a she's a short and very small handed person and she had this tiny 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 little phone in her hand <laughs> yeah and i was like obsessed with it i was that's such a cool thing and i've always thought you know tiny things are so cute so i don't know those videos of like little ketchup bottles oh, <laughs> yeah i'm obsessed with that kind of thing <laughs> yeah. uh so yeah i'm i agree like i I like the idea of everybody being able to have a device that works for them and it, you know, fits in their hand or, or doesn't. And so like with my monster hands, the 10 S max is fine, but yeah, not ever. And sometimes I forget that this is a max. I just, the other day I was like, Oh, right. This is the big size. I you got so used to it that you don't even consider it to be that big anymore. Yeah. And yeah. I can't imagine going, I mean, of course, you know, if, if, if it happened, I would, eventually be okay because as Renee points out a lot our brains figure things out after you know after a period of time and where we just find the new normal and it's a-okay um so I could go back down to a smaller size but I yeah I like having all that screen and it fits comfortably in my hand but I totally understand for folks who don't necessarily want that because it doesn't fit as comfortably in their hand or it's hard to carry around with them or what have you and when you don't have like <laughs> clothes with large enough pockets and things like that. It's ridiculous. Uh, so totally understandable on, on both ways there. Uh, Renee, do you have any last thoughts on that? And then let's hear your next highlight. Uh, no, I mean, I, I went over it in my video, so I don't want to recapitulate too much in case people have already seen it. And if not, just go watch or it. Or if they haven't seen it, you don't want to spoil it for no them. Spoilers, no. no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> I, <don't Yeah>. <laughs> I would love uh, an iPhone SE sized phone with a 4.7 inch edge to edge screen, though. I think that would be a hell of a product. Uh, and I hope that Apple gives that all due consideration in the new year. Hmm. Excellent. Put a pin in that. <laughs> okay. 
Is, is my is my second one not Micah? Can I go next? Yes. Can I go yes. Next? All right. Yes. So this is a little bit inside baseball, but I make no apologies for that. And I think one of the <laughs> biggest and bestest stories of the year was Lori Gill and everything that she's done on iMore since she has taken the reins. It doesn't count. Because, <laughs> no, it absolutely counts because if you look at just the sheer amount of of things that Lori has accomplished. If you go to iMore and you look at the amount of stories that are going out, the range of subjects that are going out, new product like we're iMore is covering Nintendo in a way it never used to, and it's mm -hmm. been hugely successful. And she's adding products to it, and she's getting the best people to write about them. And mm -hmm. the site looks fantastic. It's running smooth and silky like clockwork. Uh, and she still is like this exuberant, inspiring, energizing, <laughs> amazing <All right>. motivator <laughs> each and every day. And it makes people want to do better work. And I think it gives the readers better things to read and to look at. And yeah. you can literally feel it every day. And it's like, it's, it's never, it's never slow. It's never lazy. It's never like, just like you look at a bunch of websites and they're all the same. Their front pages are all the same. Their stories are all the same. Their coverage is all the same. And that is absolutely not true. And Lori has really, you know, like I had my time doing that. Serenity Caldwell had her time doing that. And it's like Lori jumped up on all our shoulders and then leapt into the sky. <laughs> and it, Thank it's you, absolutely Renee. one of my favorite, my favorite things of this year. Let me cut in. Let me cut in with that real quick and just make sure that everybody understands that it's not just me. That the the IMOR staff, that our our team is absolutely the best writing team anywhere ever. I don't care who you are or who you write for or what you do for a living. Take your team Aaron is Sorkin. not as good <laughs> as IMOR. <laughs> Take that, Josh Whedon. Uh, exactly. To, to continue it's, to put Lori on blast. To continue to put Lori on blast, I uh, and I know you just love this, but um, I I can't agree more. Um, Lori somehow has this like internal energy. You guys, I'm gonna that, leave. <laughs> you, if you need to go while we talk about you, that's fine. Uh, has this energy that I have no I like earthly idea how it's infectious. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And Russell had talked about how. Uh, just the other day, she's like, she'll drop everything and be able to help you. And that is so true. And Lori, I feel like something that's unique about you as a leader that I always appreciated was the fact that you strove to make personal connections with people and to truly make them feel uh, cared about. And it, you know, it went past just like, Hey, what's the latest thing? And, 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 you know, that kind of, it, it was, it was a lot more and it was, it was deep and it was felt and it was awesome. And I think that it is through those kinds of things, not just the simple sheer, you know, will that you have and the energizer bunny stuff that you have, but also <laughs> the way that you interact with people and the way that you make them feel is what makes people do the good work that they do. So uh -huh. keep on thank keeping you. on in the new year, Lori, because you are a rock star. Oh, thank you so much. You two are so sweet. <laughs> and and again, um, let me let me follow that up with it's it, I, I know what you're saying, Micah, and I can't say it's not just me in that specific scenario, but I am also inspired by everyone that I work with too. You're all great and you're all inspirational. And I continue to try to live up to your standards as much as I want you to live up to my standards. And, and I think we all make a really great team together. I couldn't do or be what I am if it weren't for the people that I work with too. So. Hooray for iMore. <laughs> All right, let's stop talking about me now. <laughs> uh, so moving on, we're going to talk about me. No, uh, we are, but it's sure. not. It, I There's a reason. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really enjoyed um, in, what was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in 2018. So in March of 2018, I wrote a post called How HomeKit's Software Authentication Works. Um there, I, I'm sort of the the home automation uh, yes. maestro, and <laughs> really love digging into that stuff and learning more about it and figuring out what's going on. And um, there was so there was like an announcement in a WWDC, uh, you know, off Broadway uh, <laughs> session where they talked about software authentication coming to HomeKit. And a lot of people were very confused about what that meant and what exactly it was going to bring. 
And so I got a chance to really dig in and look into what it was and find out just how exciting it ended up being. Uh, it launched with iOS 11.3 and Apple didn't include it as part of the like rundown of, hey, here's what you get with 11.3. But I felt like it was a big, 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 big deal. And in writing about it, um, you know, I end up talking to Apple about it and getting more information and figuring out how it all worked and like what was coming and figuring out what companies would be uh, coming forth and learning about like uh, home kit accessory protocols and the uh, motion or I mean the the authentication coprocessors and all these different things and how different manufacturers uh, deal with this and do hardware versus software authentication and what are the pros like all that stuff is so not just fascinating, but helpful when it comes to understanding how all this tech technology works. And um, it gave me a deeper appreciation for HomeKit in general, which I already sort of uh, lift up as, at, you know, when it, when it first shipped, there was a narrative that it wasn't great and that was fair, but it has gotten so much better, but people haven't taken a chance to revisit it. So the narrative continues that it's supposedly not great. I hear that too many times and I want to just like stop them and jump through whatever thing I'm listening or reading them and say, no, listen, have you tried it? Because it's changed and it's awesome. Um, and so because of, of the software authentication and the work that Apple puts into, again, privacy and security, uh, it just it was just a whole nother level of appreciation that I have for the team that works on these and also the third party companies who create products for HomeKit. Um, so really, that was kind of a I was thankful to have gotten a chance to write about that and then see it um, see it go around. Uh, apparently, there were some executives at Apple who read it, which was really exciting. Uh, it was you know, shared on some other big sites, uh, some other people like looking into it. And um, uh, also some of our our friends on the internet who, who host Apple sites talking about it as well. And so it's just kind of like one of those where I thought it was just a nerdy thing that I was very into. And uh, Serenity at the time was like, yeah, you should do that. And was very, you know, um, encouraging of it and then i put it out there and then it was received well and that was that that felt good it's like oh this wasn't just a nerdy thing that i am sort of like getting to do and you know it doesn't matter it ended up uh being of interest to others so and yeah that was our favorite moment <clears throat> that's one of those things that like it's apple does so much when they push out big even even point updates they're so big that they want to show you these really big features and then they just kind of skip over or skim over the not as flashy, but just as important features. And you were able to kind of hone in on something that's really important and very relevant to, to all of us and kind of explain that and kind of get the details and get what's important about it and what it means to everybody and share that. So that this, this sort of like behind the scenes up, um, feature that's that was added that that didn't necessarily get the front page because it doesn't you know change physically anything that right. you say see or do you, you know you you were able to kind of bring that to light and go wait everybody this is actually a really big deal <laughs> and you should check this out because this is important this is a big deal and this does matter and it does mean something so it was really great that you kind of you saw this, you saw that it was a big deal and that it was important and you ran with it and you figured it out and you talked to the right people to get the right information so that it was kind of there and ready for us to like learn about and absorb so that it became a really big deal, which otherwise it may not have been really noticed or mm -hmm. I mean, maybe someone else would have noticed it, but like, yeah, I, they noticed it, but it was so everybody had the wrong idea about what was going on. Yeah. So you did, you did great to kind of bring that around to everybody and, and, and not just kind of make assumptions on what it was and not just copy what somebody else said on the internet about it, but you actually went and did the research and talked to the right people to get the right information about it, which was really brilliant. Well, thank you. It was great. Uh, Okay, I think what we should do now is sort of do a, a a quick fire to to share the you know the other highlights that we have. So, Lori, what are the other things that made your list? And we'll just let you talk about them. We won't do like round robin where we also comment too much. Okay, um, I also loved this is an article that kind of went un 
not unnoticed, but it didn't get as much attention as I wanted it to. It was one of Serenity's last articles, not her very last, but it was close. It was around the time when she was going to be leaving. So it just kind of slipped through the cracks. And it was an interview that she did with a developer. Oh, yeah, um, so good. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'm going to mis mispronounce her first name, Akshaya Dinesh, who um, was a student app developer. She was at WWDC. Um, she had started, she had co-founded with someone um, and uh, a group, an organization that was called that's called uh, Girls Makes Girls Make Apps. Mm. So it was an organ. It's it is an organization that um, encourages young women to um, learn how to code, and they provide um, free uh, programs and classes for for coding for girls and young women. And the interview that she, that uh, Serenity got to do with her, she met with her at WWC and wrote that article, and it was really brilliant. And um, it did kind of like just sort of slipped through the cracks with all the other big WWDC stuff, and and with Serenity leaving that, um, I just I did want to bring that up th th at this because it was it was really inspirational. This young woman who had started coding when she was very young, she missed her friend's sixteenth birthday party because she was sitting at home writing a hundred lines of code for a tic tac toe game, and this was like her first game that she had made, and it was really inspiring to see that. And 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 she, it, you know, she started an entire organization to help young women go, you know, do exactly what she did, which was very inspirational. So that, that's another one of my favorites of the year. Renee. Well, I think one of the big stories for me was how Apple got its pro back, you know, uh, not quite its groove back, but it's got, it's got its pro back. And after a couple of years of pro users feeling like they were kind of neglected by Apple or they were being deprioritized, in in light of more mainstream fare, Apple actually making products that were more appealing that actually sold better, but really pissed off their higher end user base. Apple came around, and we started getting like MacBook Pros with 32 gigabytes of RAM and with Vega, you know, v Pro Vega cards, and we got a new Mac Mini. And yeah, it's more expensive, but it's also Prospect uses real desktop parts now. And we got a new MacBook Air after years of not getting a new MacBook Air, and we got the iMac Pro very late last year, but that sort of bled into the beginnings of this year and they've been updating final cut pro and logic pro like absolute champs mm -hmm. um, for the last year and it just it, they got this pro workflow team in they're working on a new modular mac pro they're working on a new pro display and it really feels like they're back on track like we'll have to it remains to be seen if they'll keep it up next year they really have to like i don't want this to be a one-off and i know it's hard to sort of be mainstream and be niche and be pro user and be prosumer and be consumer all at the same time especially for a company like apple that really does want to focus on one thing at a time but i was just i think they got a really good balance this year it wasn't too too over the top and it wasn't too sort of commoditized out and i really hope that this uh, is the new normal and we see this really really going forward um and i think so those are my best for you because Michael already talked about the health thing and that was that was just huge for me. And I think in an era where we do see iPhone has become like a platform, everyone's all concerned about, oh, uh, you know, their Apple's not going to sell any more iPhones. And, you know, everybody has iPhones. We're handing down iPhones. Platform is billions huge. And everything they build on top of that, whether it is Apple Music or Apple Television or Apple Magazines or whatever. And I think Apple Health is going to be the most important. And when you see the uh, the... Um, Apple Watch and AirPods and all the things that they can do. I'm just super enthusiastic. And I think they built a really good foundation for that this year. Awesome. Uh, one of the things that I also want to highlight, Renee has been sort of, he, uh, he'll talk about it occasionally. And every time I get super excited, it is the idea of like always on multi-factor authentication where your devices are always sort of, you know, looking at you, looking at your good side, looking at your bad side, looking, looking at your forehead and, and feeling your fingerprints and all these things uh, to constantly know that you are you and that through all of those things then it does a better job of understanding hey this is the person who owns the device holding the device or this is the person typing on the device who owns the device and uh renee you just put out a video about it and i was very excited um so everybody should go check that out as well to talk about the future of authentication and how Face ID and Touch ID and I don't know Snore ID and Walk ID and they say that your walk is just as unique as your fingerprint. All of these things can come together to 
continually off and make sure that we are who we are. And if that means like typing in less passwords and uh, also knowing that my stuff is even more secure than it would be otherwise, I am so for that future and I cannot mm -hmm. wait for it. So uh, watch that video and then shout that you want that future to come too so that you know Apple can hear it and, and make it happen. And other companies too can hear it and make it happen. Uh, cause if they can do fall detection, then they can, and they can do, what is it? Running cadence detection with the Apple watch. Then I'm sure they can do uh, gate detection, walking gate detection. And that's just one more form of, of authentication that would be awesome to have. So yeah, Renee, I'm glad that you continue to champion that. It was for uh, your birthday, Mike. Oh, oh, that's sweet. Uh, I'm glad that you continue to champion that multi auth future. And my fingers are crossed that that is going to happen. Yay. Uh, all right, Lori, any other remaining highlights that you have for us? You know, <clears throat> I think the other remaining highlight that I have is I'm going to go drink some eggnog now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Renee? Uh, no, I'm just happy that I get to do the show with all of you. And uh, again, maybe we'll get a Georgia Micah special on in the new year. Yes, yes. we will. We will. Uh, the one last thing that I want to talk about then uh, before we, we wrap up the show, um, this has been a year of um, social media companies, which there's one, there's a lot of bad stuff going on with them. But there was one good thing that I saw in, in a trend of uh, them being more uh, what am I trying to say? They, they were more visible about being accessible and inclusive. Um, Instagram just recently launched alt text descriptions for their site. Uh, and on top of that, they do, what is it? Computer learning, uh, computer vision stuff to also describe images in the feed. So even if people don't type in alt text, then that's available. Twitter has made it even easier to put that in and then also lots of or some third party apps are hopping on board to offer that alt text description as well. Um, and so I'm really happy that these features that for far too long have been sort of second thoughts uh, for a lot of companies are, you know, being pushed to the forefront. And not only that, but that you know, everyday people are being more aware of those things and choosing to um, choosing to partake or participate in that. Uh, you know, the whole idea with social media is that you are wanting to share your content with people on the internet. And so if that is your goal, then it absolutely makes sense. Even if you look at it from like a completely selfish standpoint, like that totally makes sense that you'd want to add alt text because that just means more people can see your stuff. So, you know, what I hope is that like, I guess a challenge I'll put to all of you listening is uh, if you're not adding alt text, start adding alt text and also take a second to teach someone that you know how to add alt text to their stuff, to their media that they post online. Um, yeah. So that is going to do it for us this week. We will, of course, be back next week with our look into 2019. I want to thank you all for listening. I want to thank Jim Metzendorf for editing the show and always making us sound incredible. Uh, if Georgia Dow were here, were here uh, she would tell you that you can find she would her. Tell her lawyers to tell you. Yes, yeah, she, yes, she will have her people <laughs> get in contact with your people. Uh, you can find her Twitter account at Georgia underscore Dow. Don't forget the underscore. Uh, but you can also head to. Oh golly, uh, Renee, do you remember what it is now? Because it was anxiety dash videos dot com. I forget what the other one is. Though. Yeah, it's just changed. Does that does anxiety dash videos still work though? Yes. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So you can head to anxiety-videos.com and learn things like conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, anxiety. It's it's awesome. It's one more way to empower yourself to, to understand your meat sack in the new year. So go check <laughs> that out. Uh, Renee Ritchie, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? You can find me at Renee Ritchie on all the social things. You can find my work at imore.com slash vector. Or if you want to go straight to YouTube, it is youtube.com slash vector show. And then hit that little little subscribe button in the corner. Just, just do that while you're there. <laughs> Heck yeah. Lori Gill, people are looking for you online. Where can they find you? They shouldn't look for me online. They should look for Renee Ricci at Vector because <laughs> it's pretty incredible. <laughs> and that's youtube.com slash vector show. Show. <laughs> 
I uh, I think that's a really great show, and I don't even want to promote myself because I think Vector is pretty fantastic. I think Renee, you you've done an incredible thing You're this year by creating Vector. So yeah, you are you are killing it. Yeah, I mean, you're providing impressed. something to fans of tech and and consumers of tech as well as people who oh, don't yeah. really understand tech a, a service that isn't really being provided anywhere else which is you're looking you're you're finding the facts and you're finding the reality of things while some people are being crazy and doing you know just oh look at this crazy thing that just happened you go in <laughs> and find the truth and you provide that truth and even if the truth matches that person's crazy thing you you present that to us and you help us understand why that crazy thing is even happening at all. So that's oh, yeah. my so self-promotion today. <laughs> I dig it. Well, if you're looking for Lori Gill online, you can find her <laughs> at A-P-P-A-H-O-L-I-K. That's Appaholic on Twitter or at Lori Gill on other social things. If you're looking for me online, you can find me at Micah Sargent on most of the social things. You can also head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to all the things I do. Thanks again to Renee for giving me that beautiful, wonderful idea. I am always excited to talk about my chihuahua.coffee URL. Uh, you can find writing from all of us uh, over at imore.com. And of course, be sure to check out the show notes because that will have links to the stuff we talked about in this episode. We will, of course, be back next week with more. Depending on when you're watching this, I hope you have a great rest of your week or weekend. This has been the iMore Show Ho Ho. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays to you. <laughs>